I'm Dr. Chip Levy. I'm Professor of Medicine and Medical Director of Cardiac Rehabilitation and Preventive Cardiology at the John Oshner Heart and Vascular Institute, Oshner Clinical School, the University of Queensland School of Medicine here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I'm also the Associate Editor and Cardiovascular Section Editor of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings and the author of the recent book, The Obesity Paradox. But I'm here today to discuss our editorial entitled, Exercising for Health and Longevity versus Peak Performance, Different Regimens for Different Goals, which will be published along with two high-powered original research articles in an upcoming issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The first author of our editorial is a very well-known preventive cardiologist, Dr. James O'Keefe, the Mid-America Heart Institute in Kansas City. And the second author is Dr. Barry Franklin, an internationally known exercise physiologist and clinician from William Beaumont Hospital in Royal Oaks, Michigan. The stimulus for our editorial were two excellent papers, the first by Drs. Paul Williams and Paul Thompson on increased cardiovascular disease mortality associated with extreme aerobic exercise in heart attack survivors, and the second, a meta-analysis from Europe from Spain and Italy, showing increased survival among elite athletes compared to the general population. Now, I think it's well known that increased physical activity and increases in cardiorespiratory fitness are associated with numerous beneficial health outcomes. And my co-authors and I have published substantially on this topic, including many articles in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. But his, as Hippocrates noted centuries ago, everything in excess is opposed to nature. And my co-authors and I have published many things showing the diminishing returns of very extreme levels of exercise. And in fact, very high levels of exercise, like marathon running, long distance, bicycle rides, ultra triathlons, are associated with cardiotoxicity. Uh, in fact, Dr. James O'Keefe and I had a major paper on this in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings in 2012, and Dr. Barry Franklin has many papers on this as well. And just for example, with a marathon, somewhere between 30 and 50 percent release cardiac troponin, the same protein that's released in heart attacks and used to monitor heart attacks, the same number released BNP, brain natriuretic peptide, which is released in heart failure, used to diagnose, assess, and treat heart failure. And if we do scans of the heart, a very large number will have cardiac dilatation and dysfunction, particularly of the septum and the right ventricle, showing signs of cardiotoxicity. We also know many papers show that high levels of exercise are associated with somewhere between two and five-fold increased risk of atrial fibrillation, which is also associated with considerable cardiovascular morbidity and mortality, particularly an increased risk of stroke. And Dr. O'Keefe and I discussed this in our previous Mayo Clinic Proceedings paper, as well as in a paper last year with Arthur Menezes talking about the risk factors for atrial fibrillation. Well, in this issue of the proceedings, Drs. Paul Williams and Paul Thompson assessed data in about 2,400 heart attack survivors and certainly showed that those who were regularly exercising had much better cardiovascular survival than did the sedentary individuals up to a point, up to about 30 miles per week of running or about 46 miles per week of walking. There were benefits, but beyond this point, there were actually negative effects of this very high level of exercise. Another paper recently from Germany showed this same J-shaped relationship in over a thousand patients with stable coronary heart disease. Now along this same line, I have a paper being published today July 28, 2014, in Journal of American College of Cardiology, of 55,000 people, 13,000 runners and 42,000 non-runners. And we showed in this paper that the runners had significant reductions in total mortality and cardiovascular mortality by 30 and 45 percent respectively. On average, the runners having a three-year increase in life expectancy. But importantly, we showed the maximal benefits were at quite low doses of running, 
certainly this was an example that more was not necessarily better. Now in the same issue of the proceedings, the group from Europe, mostly from Spain, but also an author from Italy, did a meta-analysis of 10 studies of over 42,000 elite athletes showing that the elite athletes had better survival. Reductions in total mortality by 33%, cardiovascular mortality by 27%, and cancer mortality by 40% compared with the general population. Now, at first glance, you may think that, well, this is contradicting our other papers or contradicting the Williams-Thompson paper, and really it's not. This is a very interesting paper, but several limitations should be noted. This study assessed a, a wide variety of athletes, from professional baseball players, professional football players, soccer players, cyclists, many Olympic athletes. And these athletes in general were not doing the extreme levels of exercise that one would be doing in a marathon or an Ironman triathlon. Also, these athletes, when they were in their sport, they were young and in the prime of life. These are not typically older athletes. And many of these people clearly are gifted, and they often remain healthy during their later years. Nevertheless, although we do not think that this study exonerates the adverse effects of extremely high levels of exercise, at least it gives us comfort to know that previous high-level act athletic activity, athletic competition, is not associated with long-term adverse sequelae, and in fact, appears to be associated with better survival. So what then can we say about the optimal level of exercise? Certainly our national federal activity guidelines recommend about 150 minutes per week of moderate physical activity or 75 minutes per day of vigorous physical activity. The Institute of Medicine suggests about an hour of total physical activity. Depending on what source you read, only somewhere between 20 and 50 percent of people are achieving this minimal goal. So the majority of people in the United States and most of the Western world are well below this minimal requirement. Probably to get the maximal benefits of exercise, particularly moderate and vigorous exercise, one needs to do about 30 to 40 minutes per day and certainly less than 60 minutes per day. Beyond this point, it's probably a point of diminishing returns. You're not getting any further health benefits, and you're risking the potential for cardiotoxicity, things like an increased risk of atrial fibrillation. And our running study in the general population showed that maximal benefits were at quite low doses of running. And the paper by Williams and Thompson suggests that in patients with coronary heart disease, that at levels of running above 30 miles per week and walking above 46 miles per week, you could actually be seeing some adverse effects. So in conclusion, as Mark Twain said many years ago, everything in moderation, including moderation. And Hippocrates said centuries ago, if we could give every individual the proper amount of nourishment and exercise, not too little, but not too much, we may have found the safest way to help. And although these words were spoken by Hippocrates over 2,000 years ago, my co-authors and I believe that there is still considerable truth to these words in many aspects of life and health. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.